Parenting is a task that requires sacrifice. The fact that children are not asked to be born, the minute you decide to have a child, you should immediately know what comes with the territory. And when a person has a child and that person is selfish, it is a recipe, ladies and gentlemen, for disaster. And this is what I believe almost took the life of this 15-year-old girl. It will shock you. Joe Waits says in his nearly 28 years as district attorney, he's never seen anything this horrific. And her 10-year-old sister had to witness everything that this 15-year-old had to endure. She's an incredible young lady to be able to encounter what she went through and be able to tell our detectives what happened. Let's talk about how this selfish mother put her boyfriend and her needs in front of her daughter, and by the grace of God, she was saved by unexpected turn of events. The the uh, parts of her body that she's lost, uh, the the horrific uh, mental and physical scars that she'll endure for the rest of her life. Will we ever get justice for this person? I don't think that we can. Let's talk about it. It's a matter of a. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Matter of Opinion. I'm your boy, Walsh P, and hopefully by the end of the video, you guys will consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking that notification bell and definitely smashing that like button. And if you want to follow us on our other social media platforms, the links are in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 40-year-old Latanya Ann Harris and 41-year-old Terrence Washington out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. These two are being charged with attempted first-degree murder and cruelty to a child. And Terrence Washington's case, he's also being charged with indecent behavior with a child molestation, and second-degree grape. Let's break down what these two degenerates did to this 15-year-old girl. She's an incredible young lady to be able to encounter what she went through and be able to tell our detectives what happened. With emotion in his voice, Terrebonne Parish Sheriff Tim Sonier provided details about a gruesome case that crosses state lines. Last month, his department was notified of a child abuse case that may have gone undiscovered, if not for a car wreck. The accident happened on I-10 eastbound in Baytown, Texas, about 300 miles away from Thibodeau. Baytown police say 41-year-old Terrence Washington was driving recklessly and was armed. 40-year-old Latanya Harris was in the passenger seat. Her two daughters, ages 10 and 15, were also in the car. The police say that the 15-year-old was suffering from gunshot wounds and severe burns to more than 30% of her body. I just want to put in perspective of what this 15-year-old girl had to go through. This man graped her on numerous occasions spanning over months. That's number one. The second thing is he shot her on two occasions. On one occasion, him and the mom was arguing I believe in front of the children. And the result of that argument ended with him wind up shooting this girl in the chest. After she was shot, there was no taking her to the hospital. They actually thought they could nurse this little girl back to health. Once the mother found out about the graping, that's when she decided to blame the daughter, stand over her, grab rubbing alcohol, douse it all over her body, strike a match, and set her own daughter on fire because she blamed that little girl for her boyfriend graping her. And the sad part about it is that the 10-year-old sister was right there in the room when this happened, witnessing all of this. No paramedics call, no rushing her to the hospital, nothing. They figured she would just heal. She'll get better with time. Meanwhile, flesh is burning. You can smell the dead skin in the house. Who would put their child through that? What parent do you know would actually put their child through something like that and actually sit back and watch and witness this and do nothing? WWL Louisiana obtained court records that show Harris pled guilty to child desertion in 2017. At the time, the court ordered her to, among other things, complete a parenting class. Detectives learned that mid-February 2024, the juvenile female was burned after LaTanya Harris had learned of a sexual assault committed on the juvenile by her fiancé, Terrence Washington. Harris burned the juvenile with flammable liquid in a lighter at the Thibodeau residence. 
When detectives searched the family's home behind me here, they say they not only found evidence that a gun was shot inside the home, but they also documented a strong odor of infection and decomposing flesh. The sheriff says the girls were homeschooled, which may have been why the abuse went unreported for so long. The sheriff says Harris and Washington denied her medical care, and now they face a laundry list of charges. All the signs were there that this woman was an unfit parent. And then the fact that you set them up for homeschool, this way you could cover up your tracks for the abuse that was going on in that house. This 15-year-old never stood a chance. And this abuse had to have been going on for a while because think about it. If this guy comes into this woman's life and then isn't emboldened enough to actually shoot this girl, grape her over months, that means that he had to see that this woman was abusing this little girl the minute he stepped into her life. He saw the abuse that was happening and knew that this 15-year-old was damaged goods. Prime opportunity to take advantage of her. Why? Because he saw exactly what the mother was doing to this child and that it was open season. She set the standard and he capitalized on it. It will shock you. Joe Waits says in his nearly 28 years as district attorney, he's never seen anything this horrific. Washington is in Texas being held without bond for crimes there. Harris is in Terrebonne Parish Jail being held on a $1 million bond. Will we ever get justice for this person? I don't think that we can. The the uh, parts of her body that she's lost... Uh, the the horrific uh, mental and physical scars that she'll endure for the rest of her life. What this 15-year-old went through, I don't think anybody can recover from what she experienced. But if there's a person that actually can recover from this, I believe that it's her. Why do I say this? Because this 15-year-old, with all the abuse, all the graping, she's been shot twice, she's been burned and when they found her in the back of that car when that accident happened, this little girl was fighting to stay alive. Just think about that. She's fighting to stay alive, knowing if she survives, torment is waiting for her. Abuse is waiting for her. Being graped is waiting for her. But yet, she still fought like hell to stay alive. Isn't that amazing? If she can survive through that, I believe she's strong enough to find that healing, to forgive her mother for what she put her through, to forget this man for what he put her through. I pray that she get that healing. She find God, get close to God so that the almighty can actually help her forgive her abusers to find that closure. Because to find closure, you're going to have to forgive those that abused you. If you can't forgive them, you'll never find that closure. And to these two individuals, I pray that they get life in prison. Never see the day of light, because not only did you endanger her, you also endangered that 10-year-old daughter. See, this is deeper than that, because you basically taught these little girls that this is a life of normalcy. This is the behavior that a mother should do to her children. These are the type of things that are expected. This is the type of man you should bring in your life or bring in your circle. And if he decides to do these heinous things, this should be okay. You should back that man up for his actions. Don't be a mama bear and protect your cub. No, what's normal is to abuse my child in the eyes of these children. So I pray that they suffer for everything that they did to these children. All the mental anguish, all the physical damage. It's very difficult to go through life with all that on your mind. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what happened when you have a selfish parent, when they put their needs in front of the children. Because see, if you're selfish, you then start to resent the children or the child because they're impeding on your happiness. My thing is, if you're that selfish, why not give up the child? Give the child to the father, give the child up for adoption, whatever the case may be, because that will increase that child's success rate to actually 
having a happy life. There are people out there that can't have kids that would embrace having children, do everything they can to make sure that that child becomes a productive member of society. Tea time. Did you hear the story about the mother who voluntarily dropped her kids off to CPS and live streamed it on Facebook? Amora Lex is a mother of five who lives in Columbus, Ohio, and less than a week ago, she went on Facebook Live to ask if anyone at all could come and take her kids because she just couldn't do it anymore. She waited and waited, and then no one stepped up, so she live streamed herself again as she took the kids to the local fire station so that she could surrender them. When that didn't work out because the fire station could not take kids who aren't newborns, she, they escorted her to CPS so she can leave her kids there and she left them. This is this is killing me. Yeah. But it's for the better. Like it's yeah. it's for me to get my life better and focus on my schooling, my career, and my health. Number one, my health so I don't die because I can't do shit for them if I'm if I'm dead. Yeah. I can't stop stressing if I don't have help, you know? And so I it's like that. And it's like the dads didn't want to help me. They wanted to see me beat. I done lost everything so many times. <laughs> but you know what? Like I said, I'm going to come back for them. She gave up her child for adoption and people were taking her through the ringers. And I'm like, no, that woman saw what could possibly be. So she made the right choice that she saw fit for those children. At the end of the day, parenting is designed to be done by two people. Because when you're ready to go off the edge, normally what happens is the other parent reel you back in. And when the other parent is ready to go off the edge, that parent reel them back in. You need that balance. This single parent home nonsense that's going on is destroying our nation, destroying society. So if you're telling me giving up a child for adoption because you see that you're unfit to be a parent or you're selfish and you want to put your needs in front of a child and that means that children will not go through what this 15-year-old had to endure, hey, I'm all for it, 1,000%. So again, my prayers to those two girls and I hope they find that healing and to those two degenerates, I hope they get what's coming to them. Put God first. Let's keep that nuclear family going on Let's make a better society. That's going to do it for this episode of Matter of Opinion. I'm your boy, Walls P. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I would love to hear your take on this matter. And if you want to see how this dad went out of his way to protect his child from bullying, click this video that just popped up. Catch you on the next one. Peace. It's a matter of opinion.